getting toward the end of this session here. Uh, Nina Kilbride from Monax. You've been hearing a lot about uh, smart contracts all day. She's going to give us uh, the lowdown on, on how we bring this broad legal concept into the digital world. Thanks, Nina. Take it away. Thank you, Michael. Hi, I'm Nina Kilbride. I'm head of the commercial e commercialization effort at Monax Industries, where we have been designing and building blockchain smart contracts as legal infrastructure since 2014. Um, today I'm going to talk about getting smart about smart contracts. And really what that means is getting smart about the legal infrastructure that is going to enable all of the applications we've been talking about today to operate at full throttle. A little bit about me. Um, before I joined Monax uh, about three years ago um, to begin developing smart contracts, I was a commercial litigation attorney for 18 years. I, I call that job a glorified janitor of commerce, right? So I joined Monax with this idea that we were going to build the infrastructure that was going to enable success of all of the digital infrastructure companies that were looking to transform the world. Enough about me, though. The reason we are all here at the Digital Money Forum is because the economy has shifted from the focus on all of us working together to build some expensive physical product in the world that maybe we can sell to a technologically enabled network and ecosystem where we can begin to see more opportunities, derive more value, and build more solutions out in the real world. So what that means in a networked economy for all those ecosystem level applications that we're talking about, these are companies in the relationship business. What is it that the business models of the next generation or today are really doing to disrupt and transform the way commerce works? Uh, they make their money on relationships. We think about Facebook, Twitter, Google. They provide a, a product or service, but really the value is in the information they can gather about their users and then the ability to turn that information into new actionable business solutions. So these new relationship-centric business models require significant support from a legal engineering perspective. Um, how do we design not only the growth models to create these business relationships, but how do we also engineer the risk models to make sure that we don't fire off a whole lot of businesses that are just meant to crash and burn? And when we start talking about the rules of relationships, particularly commercial relationships, at base, they're all legal rules. So as we move forward into the digital infrastructure or the digital economy, the winners here are going to have digital infrastructure at their back to enable them to get their moonshots across. And if you don't have digital legal infrastructure, you're going to get blocked, you're going to have messes, and you're going to have more failed learnings than successful learnings. Um, one of the examples of working without digital legal infrastructure um, that we see in our space from the last couple of years was the ICO boom. A lot of great ideas moving forward, but the ICO community had outstripped the ability of the legal technology infrastructure to serve it. But here we come to blockchains. Blockchains are fundamentally legal technology. Um, they're evidence machines, a better way of creating, storing, operating, and proving operations in digital technology. We can see how this sort of legal technology infrastructure is going to enable all sorts of um, economic disruption. And we think about Bitcoin and Ethereum being two signal um, use cases that prove that fundamentally small changes of legal operations can make markets. So at Monax, um, being legal, legal engineers, a lot of us, um, we saw this idea of smart contracts, which are scripts, that, cryptographic scripts interacting with blockchains. We saw this as a paradigm shift for the way 
we as lawyers had been able to deliver legal services value to the world. No longer were we going to be bound by having to deliver our work product painstakingly one relationship at a time. We were going to be able to use software and smart contracts to create legal products, which are smart contracts with a job, to get things done and deliver legal product value at scale. This model of legal products operating, doing business with utility, has the potential to be both very disruptive and to create a ton of value across every single vertical in the economy, some we haven't even thought of yet. So a little bit about Monax and our journey to get here. Um, and I tell this story about our journey because I think it's really archetypical for what it takes to get a concept of what is going to be a visionary change in the economy, put your head down and start building. So in 2014, Monax was a collection of lawyers, engineers, and developers who had this idea that blockchains were fundamentally legal technology, despite the fact that nobody in 2014 really wanted to hear that. Um, we built the first open source um, we built the first DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Uh, we open sourced that code base as ERISDB, which became the common way for uh, businesses to try out, prototype, and operate Ethereum-compatible smart contracts. Over the course of 2015 and 2016, we tested out these hypotheses we had about the fundamental value of legal operations um, with some of the existing market makers, the usual suspects you might call them, global transactional banks, reinsurers, clearing houses, to make sure that the, con the technology was fit for purpose for the things that we thought it should be able to do. At the same time, um, we were able to um, test and, and spread the open source um, blockchain for legal operations concept. Um, still very much making a market. In 2017, we focused on making these contracts smarter and making roads for people to build their own applications. We donated our open source permissionable code base to um, Hyperledger, it's now Hyperledger Burrow, which has been leveraged to build a lot of valuable applications, including Intel's Sawtooth. Um, we also began to work really hard on not the infrastructure play of the blockchain technology, but the application that we as a company wanted to exist using blockchain. Um, in 2018, we released and open sourced and launched a number of legal tech functionality, um, commodity level operations that we knew we were gonna be able to, we were gonna need in order to deliver legal opportunity at scale. This year, having um, come through private beta, uh, we're now ready to deliver legal value at scale for digital network and ecosystems. So just like our customers, we are in the relationship business and for our company to succeed, our customers need to succeed. So with our MVP, we focused on some very universal problems that are experienced by all levels of the economy. Um, everyone who's running a business has to, have a, has to have deals upon which to act, legal contracts upon which to act, and we've got to be able to assemble those things smoothly. Once we've got them assembled, we need to be able to maintain our contracts and their obligations. Uh, time and again, we hear about snafus where people drop the ball, legal things fall through the cracks, slowing people down, costing them money, and making everyone hate lawyers. In addition, Monax leverages BPMN, Business Process Modeling Notation, to give its users a smart, reliable window on their legal operations and their legal contracts. So this BPMN methodology is open source and well understood by most people already who are developing. And so it gives us the ability to see a business process, figure out where we are in it, where are things backing down, and then reconfigure to add more value or efficiency. 
On top of that, it gives us the ability to see the data, rely on its evidence structure so we can make good decisions. Faster scalability, so you can see your opportunity, prototype and test, and then go out and seize it. So one of the most common questions I've had in the last three years at Monax is, how do, how do I take this idea of smart contracts and put it to play in my business? <coughs> so one of the, excuse me, one of the things we always say is, step a few feet back, look at what you want to achieve, and then look at the tools around you that exist to execute what needs to get done. Now for us, that meant building um, a toolkit and some design modalities that would allow anybody to build a legal smart contract application for themselves. The other thing I'd tell you is start small. We can't all swallow the ocean at once and you have to build these things one line of code at a time. For me, that meant like in 2015, thinking about the first smart contract I would write I was like, I'm going to write a promissory note because you know what they taught us about promissory notes back in law school? That's lawyer made money. So start small, test it, make sure you've got the evidence that the foundation of your smart contract is sound. Then engineer very carefully how you're going to get through your roadmap. This here, um, it was built by Rolls Royce. It's a complete jet turbine engine made out of Lego. Build it very carefully. Now here's the sort of challenge for us startups. Um, we have to stay focused on building carefully day to day without getting carried away on over engineering. Because you don't necessarily want to build a Rolls Royce turbine engine when what you really want to do is drive a Bugatti, right? So keep in mind what is it you're trying to get done? What was the vision that brought you into things? Because that brings your team, your investors, your stakeholder, and you as a builder all in line. And so, well, I've talked a lot about cars and roads and Legos and stuff like that here. Um, this process sort of reminds me more of being pregnant. <laughs> like, you gotta keep your eye on the prize and why you're working so hard right now. Um, thank you so much for your attention here. It's really been an honor to speak here at the Digital Money Forum. Um, I look forward to us all changing the world and succeeding together. Thank you.